Hello, everybody. Welcome to, uh, like some people say, Ian Friday. Ian Friday. Live watercolor painting. Painting live in. Um, it's every Friday from four to six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every mm. Friday. And um, he's arranging things right now. I am. I'm just hoping okay. that, you, that you can uh, see what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, what was that? I'm just hoping that you can see what I'm doing. That's enough of the page, I think. I think that's enough of the page. It looks like a castle. Oh, we got some people in the chat. There's, there is a building there that's... I'll explain what it is in a bit. Oh, and a person is in it. Bing. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Grace Gale. Yeah. And Sweet Jack Rule is here in a timely manner. Uh, that, that, that's on, on time. On time. Well done. That that maintains your status as my number one fan. Okay. So, hello again, Grace Gale Painting, Sweet Stack Rule, Gracie. Welcome. So good to see you guys. Oh, Mystic. Hello. And I already wished you happy birthday, but her birthday, Mystic's birthday was yesterday, oh, but happy, yeah. well, well, happy birthday again. Mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. Oh, Norgis mm -hmm. R is here. She, mm -hmm. Thanks. Nice. So nice to see her. And um, I've been, had been, she live streams almost every day in, in the morning and I've been missing her live streams. And then I, I told her this morning, oh, I'm sorry. I missed, I haven't been here in a while. And then, and she, she is a, and then I visited today. It was been a long. It had been a long time since I visited her live stream, but um, and she is a, she is an artist. She a more of a crafter, I think. Right, Norgus. Oh, Bobby's here. Hi. Oh, and he's going to be lurking. Okay, thanks, Bobby. And um, Norgus. It, thanks very much, Bobby. Good to see you. And Norgus is more of a crafter. Is that right, Norgus? And um, and and if you didn't know Ian, that's a woman because you can't tell you couldn't tell by her name. That is a woman. And um, uh -huh. I'm just trying to think on what anogus means. Don't it mean multi multifaceted anogus? I don't know. Tell us what your name means, Nor Norgus R. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> How is it spelled? Oh, it's spelled N O R G U S. Oh, anogus. Oh, I'm thinking of anogus. Uh huh. No. Oh, that's that's your, word. How did you get your Norgus R? How? Uh, what's your? What's the meaning behind your name? <clears throat> oh, Sleestack rule said snowing, snowing again. Snowing? Oh yeah. Snowing where he lives. I think he lives in Chicago suburbs. Yeah, I've seen bits of um, America under snow today. Not and us. We're in a wild winter. Oh, awesome wood things. Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you. Hey, we're going through the biggest change uh, in the world today. He can't stay long, but drop I, the I, light. I, oh, thanks I, for dropping I, I, the light. Awesome wood things. I'm going from being European to British at 11 o'clock. There you go. At, at 11 o'clock? At 11 o'clock. What a funny time to change. Oh, wait. Well, let me find out more about that, but Ian, but hold on first. Norgus is saying, uh, LOL, I have always had an imagination. So oh. wait a minute. She didn't tell about her name yet. Thanks for dropping a like, Awesome Wood Things. And... Okay. Let's Sorry, see. I've heard of the word anogus. Anogus. I'm waiting to see what she says. <clears throat> it might be nothing to do with it at all. I mean, we do come up with some very abstract names, don't we? Sometimes. Well, some people do, yeah. And, um. Can I hear beeping? No, it's outside. It's, it's that beeping is when a big truck is backing up. So there must be is something. Not a warning, vehicle reversing. Well, that's warning. a good idea. Anyway, it's not. reversing. Yeah, do that. <laughs> they should do. Health and safety. They do in our country. 
Oh, good. Hi, Carolyn, to be free. So nice to see you here. Let's see what she says about, Norgus says about her name. Norgus says, that was my imaginary friend in oh. 1969. Oh, wow. Oh, so you did you you probably like made up the name? Oh, okay. Trash truck. No, um, I don't think it was a trash truck, but trash trucks do that. It'd be it's Diana's. Um, we uh, don't have trash delivery. Uh, what they call it? Delivery. Amazon, uh, Amazon delivery. It could have they, been. They have to, to deliver it in one of those great big super trucks. Oh no no! You guess what? In a whole month. I I I went for a whole month without ordering anything on Amazon. Oh, and my husband, he still ordered stuff. And I'm like, do you know how long I've gone through without ordering anything from Amazon? I say it's been a whole month. And then right, it was December 24th. And then right on January 24th, um, I, I did order something. Did you actually so go out go out? Month. Did you actually go out shopping and doing shopping kind of thing? No, instead I, I bought like an online art class. That's where, I put my money. That's where I'd put my money. It's okay. It's okay. We live in modern world. I'm a Luddite. I like to go shopping. Oh, no. We, we don't like crowds. And um, I don't, I do not like driving around. We, it's very congested, like on the main mm. road where we live. Mm. And um, like if you were to go shopping somewhere and it's like very congested to get to, get to the mall. And I do not like driving because I, because of all the people texting while they drive, and um, well, that could be a rant. That could be a rant, but I might save that because you know what? Um, my rant is on my second new second channel. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah, if you don't know, already know, channel, and it's right. The button is right on my um. It's right on my page. My right on my home page. What, what are you saying? Uh, CD tales in in the thing at the bottom and at the, at the end of the. Sure, you put all the details in, in there. Anyway, right. I, I can't be the fool of myself on my rant. Why? <laughs> yeah, well, so? I've got to say, I've got to say, um, that the, just continuing from your rant, um, uh, the, the, the found, uh, not far away from me. Uh, some of that virus. Oh no! Oh. oh, not far away from you. Some of the virus is hitting up near where. You, it's not far away from you. Oh dear! Hi, old beer buzzard, and don't be fooled by his name. He's a poet. He and he has a poetry website and a poetry book. I've, I've had a slight problem. Oh, that's not good. That new brush I've got. Oh, that's a massive failure. Look at that. It snapped already. Oh, oh snapped. Wait, you have a problem before you can start? Well, I'm not going to be able to use that, am I? What? What? Uh, what? Bro oh, you're. Oh, that brush broke. Broke. Oh my God! You brand new brush. That's dead in water, now, I'm afraid. Right, reminder, don't get them again. If that's what they do. I mean, I've got these and that way not do that. Because the, the thing that it's made of is robust and it won't, it won't break. But that's just like so easily just. Body, I already did that. You can check that check that off my checklist. I already did that, Bobby. So anyway, that uh, near us, right? They've detected some of that um, coronavirus. And they've detected oh, it near your. I, I, I nearly called it the macarona virus. Hey, macarona. Oh, I know. Now you're uh, making fun of it. See, I was uh, afraid it's a sensitive subject. I don't know well, how much. Well, putting, put I mean, nobody wants to die, right? But uh, put it this way there's thousands more people die from flu related 
uh, deaths each year than what has died from this coronavirus. Uh, are they hyping it up or what? Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I'm in the chat. So many people more have died from what? Uh, flu virus every year. The flu? Just the flu? Oh, yeah. yeah the that's flu, right. yeah. Deadly, that's right. It, it can be. It, it, with wrong well, people, it can kill It can kill people dead easy, flu virus. Yeah, but we don't need, a, we don't need to wear a ventilator mask and wear gloves and goggles. Oh, and no, we, we don't. don't. No, but no, the coronavirus is more deadly. It's what they do in China because of pollution levels. So it's all become yeah. super trendy now to wear... I, I just wish I kept my Darth Vader mask. Well, I you should, I show my mask in my video. Well, that's it. That that that's what really annoyed me this afternoon. There was somebody walking around in this country, in in a full uh, um, a, a full mask. One of what you use when you work like in I, industrial. Like I, like I showed, Those like masks showed. will not protect you. They're not made to protect people like that. It, oh. it, it's, for, it's for protecting against dust particles. No, th not, this not virus. Vapor. This mine. Mine doesn't. Mine because I use mine for alcohol ink, and it's it prevents against vapors. But it's not a vapor. If it if it gets in the air, it's not. It's it, it, it's actually in. It connected to the oxygen in the air that you breathe. So there's there's no way you can stop it from getting into you like that. But there's the only, no mask you can wear. The, the, the only thing you can wear is one of those biohazard suits where the oxygen oh. is contained within you. Oh, where your oxygen is contained with you? Yes. Okay. Because viruses and things like that connect to the oxygen mo air molecules that you breathe in. That's if the that's if the airborne, which I'm not sure as to whether it is or not. If it's a fluid borne thing, then you have to touch some chemical that's touched it, or or touch a door that's been touched by somebody and get some of their sweat off you or something like that. And now, great. I mean, Slee Stack Rule says that um just. Just, uh, the next town over, there's two people already in the hospital with the coronavirus. Mm. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's not uh, got to be took seriously. Of course, it has. It, it could very easily get out of uh, out of control. But no, just people. Don't start going out panic buying, please, because that's the worst thing you can do. Oh, guess what? So I, I say that in my uh, in my reaction rant. Everybody, I have a second new channel, and the, the button is right on. I could use new subscribers if you or views on my videos. Anyway, the button is right on my home channel. It's called Just Diana, and that's where it's going to be a no, not an art, not an art channel, because this this is my art channel. It's going to be vlogging lifestyle and. Um, inspiration and i have three new videos up there already and oh, yeah. one, of them, one of them is my rant reaction about the coronavirus slap and then plus and the china flu my husband went to go buy masks and they're all sold out everywhere online exactly like people like i mean there might might have been a shortage anyway because people use masks all the time for all sorts of things but if they think that they're gonna like not you know, get away from uh, being infected by it by wearing a mask like that. Then you know those yeah. dust masks. It, it just won't happen. Well, anyway, okay. So you're ready to start. I am. Yes. Okay. Let's watch Ian on the big screen now. Hey. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Thanks to everybody for clicking thumbs up. Thumbs up the live stream. Thank you. Get a few things organized. It looks something like a cattle. Um, what it is is, I think it's I think it's Cuba. 
Oh, I see. It's a, it's an um, urban. It's an urban with it's, like yeah, an urban, an urban, an urban set of buildings in in Cuba. And the reason why I say it's Cuba is is this car here. It's like a nineteen. Oh, the uh, they they drive around a lot. I don't know whether it's whether they have modern cars there, but they drive around a lot in old nineteen fifties cars. Yes, I've seen that. And they're all kept pristine condition. Yes. So, you know, and they've got the largest amount of old classic cars anywhere in the world. So yeah. it, it just fascinated me yeah. with this old, these old buildings and this, like, you know, like vintage 1950s. Oh, so it's a Cuban it's a cuban street city scene a cuban street it, scene right it is so it's it's slightly i don't know italian in in feel you know it, oh look at that by the way what that's what, what, I get what you, is it? that's what you get when you do favors for people uh, uh somebody's firework uh raging out of control and they had to go into the fire and uh get some of the coal out of the fire so it weren't raging as much and you, had, you had to do this wait you had to do this this past week yeah over there and uh, it was so outrageously hot even though i didn't touch anything it burnt me hand oh so be careful. So yeah. what, this, what this painting's about today, right, is um, shadows. And how we can use shadows to interlink various parts of paintings. And, and we're going to really attempt to make things all link up together as a whole rather than painting little bits of detail like that and, and then building up. So that's that's his attempt today. And I think the light, which is really important when we're thinking about shadows, is about there, behind that building. So I'm roughly estimating about there. So what I'm going to do first is get some water and go around there around that area oh bobby says he cannot bobby mcnutt says he cannot find my new channel why it's it's, it's supposed to be the the link where it says it's the link not in the actual on in my home the, page. under featured channels i am under featured channels i wrote i wrote um my oh. vlog channel it's on it's on the right of my home page and it's supposed to be there where you're supposed to click on it and go right and go right to that my blog channel and he says please put the link in because he can't find it so all right i'll put the link in and i don't know why you can't find it hi hi alicia and uh, I, I said hello again to angela hello again and you know my palette a little bit because i've not got much space with any colors that i want so look at that that's something you don't see me doing very often because that were good usable paint oh well such is life oh a couple of people just found my link to my second new channel she found the link have you got most people open uh in it now or are there still some to come for us? No, we got. Are you I mean we got tons of people in the chat? No, I'm on about on your channel. Ask the what's the question again, please? Your new channel. Have you got more oh. people to go over to it? Well, not yet. I was trying to. I had put had posted it on my community tab and. No, I hardly have any new subscribers, oh, and, and so that's why I was announcing that's it. That's what I'm saying. At the end of this video, put it on your, put it on your, the bottom 
information on, oh, on the video. In the description box, I mean. Yeah, in the description box. Right, and they're trying to drop the link right now. And also, I can put it in the description box right now. Let me catch this. Let me get the, get the grab the oh, link. That yeah. put. Oh, hi, Pappy Noon. Oh, my goodness. Pappy Noon has a huge channel. Pappy Noon is all about like cute farm. I mean, like, I think he's on, I think he runs a farm mm -hmm. and some of his videos about farm animals and he get um, millions of views. Oh, that's good. I'm not just talking thousands. So, um, is the, is the animal PewDiePie, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So th oh, thank you for coming by, Pappy Noon, now, Noon. And I think he, um, I know he definitely, he's, I think he's bilingual, but he definitely speaks Spanish. So, because, uh, yeah, he de definitely speaks Spanish, and I think he's probably bilingual. So nice to see you here, Pappy now, so, or Noon. Unfortunately, uh, I don't speak a lot of Spanish, but hola to you. Yes, oh. Hola and um, Buenos Dias. Oh, Buenos Dios. Yeah, well, yeah, we know that one. Um. Oh, wait a minute. Uh. Oh, wait a minute. Muchas gracias. There you go. Spanish. That's about as much as I know. Oh, I know, I know, I had, well, I taught in a bilingual school for, um, oh, did you? for a long, very long time, for decades, and, um, and, um, see, when I was in college, I, my second language was, um, French, and I lived in France for a year and a half, but I'm not good on languages, and I don't know why I didn't inherit, and I did not inherit it from my parents, because both, my dad knows five to six languages, and my mother was fluent in French because she majored, majored in French, but yeah. I I didn't develop the ear for it. Like I know how to say a lot of things, but a lot of times people would say, what are you saying? And I'm like, and I try to say it again. And then I, I couldn't understand them when I hear it. So I, I, I don't call myself fluent in French. And, and then I worked with all these bilingual um, Spanish, bilingual Spanish students. And me i just learned a few phrases especially some teacher phrases to say and there's just no hope there was no hope for me i mean i just i just don't i don't know why i couldn't and oh. both my parents have no artistic talent and yet i mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't yeah. inherit their language talent well, you know why because you you left brand instead of right brand oh really that's what it is yeah well most create i don't know that many creative people oh, in the art that uh, particularly good with languages or maths which uses a different set of skills unless they grew up with it if you grow up with it you, you can't well, be you can be influenced to some extent but it's not it don't come natural to you but then again i don't know that many mathematicians or people who, who do language things that uh as creative as what creative artists are it works both ways Oh wait a minute! A cup of tea in five minutes free. That's Alicia handmade. She's um she's creative and um she has an Etsy shop of her. She j designs jewelry and she, oh she probably grew up with the two languages. She's bilingual. You yeah, did you, if you, you grew, grew up, up with the two if, languages? If you grow up around a family that has lots of different languages, then you you're going to pick up you're going to pick up some uh you're going to pick up it's like my wife she speaks three languages that's because she grew up around it uh, you, you ask her to go and learn any other language and it's just no i can't do it even though she can speak three languages and that's that is down to um the natural environment that's around you oh yes because um instead in our American school system, they have us start learning our a second language in middle school, and that's exactly mm -hmm. the wrong time to start learning a second language. You're supposed to start learning a second language like in kindergarten or earlier. Listen, best time in life to learn anything is when you're uh, between between day one through to about day five uh, to 
to year five. Year five. When you're five, what what once you reach about five year old, your brain starts developing differently, and um, it, it it don't absorb as much. Well, it still absorbs a lot. It's still yeah, but not in the same capacity that um, you do from day one through to day to year five. Your brain is constantly taking stuff in till that age. It's it's like an absolute sponge. Yeah. Whereas, oh, once, once you get once you, once you get to a certain age, your brain starts thinking, "Oh, I know that." And I know that, and and it it starts to like take it for granted, and just put it to background, so it don't really learn. It it just bypasses it, and that's that that's where you start getting cognitive thinking. Oh, uh, Angela Critters must be in a you must be in a good school district, or whether it was private school. But she said her kids started learning Spanish in kindergarten. That's exactly when they're supposed to start. And our well, the school district that I used to teach and they started uh, they did start a pilot program where they were they did start teaching kids spanish and uh, but it was only a pilot program teaching kids spanish in um kindergarten they had just, it was a pilot program only though mm -hmm. it's just, it, for me it, it is good uh learning a language if that's what you want to do I don't like forcing education on kids if, if it's if it's something that they don't want to learn. I'd sooner get them to show me what it is they want to learn and then I'll teach them. But we tend to force things on kids heavily. Yeah, and say, this yeah. is what you're going to learn. Yes. And that's to some extent wrong well there's a well there's a fine line between forcing them and then encouraging them yeah but they've what got no choice if that's the only thing that you are learning them into it's like i mean you yeah. want to get them to try new things that that's one thing like you know you want them to like uh, my stepson and stuff, he, for, when he was little, he would just eat the same thing all the time, all the time. And he was such a picky eater. He would never eat vegetables, you know, classic, classic. Never eat that. And then he only started eating salads when he was uh, 15. Really? Yeah, but uh, eventually he did do. And that's because yep. he was at the stage when he wanted to take that step. Now, some people, you know, never, never go on because they have it thrust down the throat that it, it stifles their will to want to learn because they get fed up with people going right this is what you're going to learn so it, it kind of like makes them think Ooh, i hate learning and oh, it's that, yeah, that's not good to turn them off from learning now. Mm. So we're getting a, a bit of um, what it might look like, but I'm going to leave it now because it's it's um, at this moment in time, it, it, the paper is absolutely soaking. Oh, uh, absolutely soaking. I'm, and, and by the way, this painting is going to be incredibly loose. Oh, good. No, no. Well, I'm, I'm just putting a link, and then I got to put the link for your channel in the right. in the box. I'm just put, I'm getting the link. And then I oh, then I got to read chat. Hold on, everybody. Okay, okay, let's do that. Okay, now I'm gonna go go back to chat. Whoops. Mm -hmm. So we've got a. Oh. 
I mean, if, if I think about the amount of time I spent doing things in education at school, right, and I, I, I grabbed that time back and put it into stuff that I wanted to do, I'd be that much more advanced in, in the skills that I have and what I'm wanting to do with my life. But the educational system thrusts its opinion uh on kids especially and um it i don't know it's it's part of it's part of education that i'm not happy with and i don't personally like so so it was a problem for you in school oh absolutely i mean i was dyslexic i didn't like school at all oh, because, you're well, put it this way, so hard. um put it this way i um when I, uh, I wanted to do physics at school, right? right. We've got choices and there's options. And because I was dyslexic, they said, you just won't be able to do it. So what they did is they put me in a general science class, which is just general science. And it don't touch on anything of any, anything that I didn't already know myself. You know what I mean? So I found science boring even though I like physics, but they knew better. Oh, uh, you know what good. I mean? At the end of the day, they shouldn't be judging who, uh, uh, who will or will not succeed. They should let yeah. you have a go. They should let you have a go. And if you don't, fair enough. Yeah, that's right. Think or swim. It's your time. It, it, it's, it's like... It, it, it's like just, yeah. It's like having a swimming pool and saying... Uh, we don't know whether you can swim or not, um, but we're not going to put you in water anywhere. Well, so you'll some... never know whether. So, so that one day when you need to life and death learn, to... somebody died the other day because they'd never learned to swim. Can you believe that? So, and we're not talking about a child, we're talking about an adult. So learning, the, and, and I'm not saying that we have that kind of life and death decision, but um, some sometimes the really life, in, you know, some decisions that these people make for us. That might have uh, been, that's also because that was a long time ago and time, well, time has changed. My stepson has really had a very good experience in school. I mean, he's in a really good school district, not a private school, mm -hmm. but it's a very good public school district. And he's just had... You know, uh, there's just never, I mean, he hasn't had any problems. But, oh, my goodness. Look at Carolyn to be free says, my grandson had to dissect the cow's eye yesterday. <laughs> he was mortified. <laughs> that's, why I that's why I weren't right bothered about um, biology. That's why what? That's why I weren't right bothered about biology because I, I just didn't think I was going to, I don't know, I just. I had this adversion against um, dissection. Uh, dissection of animals. Fair enough. You, if, if, if it's there, if it's there for proper research reasons, right? Right. Uh, and people are learning from it, then you know, and it, and it benefits mankind as a whole. Then fair enough. But me cutting a, a cow's eye open or whatever, or cutting a frog in, in half. Usually it, it's a frog. They're talking about a frog. It ain't going ain't gonna to benefit mankind one jot, is it? But Mystic says she had to dissect the cow's eye also. It must be that, that that must be some new trend going on in new edu and more um, contemporary education. Well, and it did. They've learned how to dissect a cow's eye. Woohoo! I think you can learn something from that, what? but okay, if you don't think so, all right. Uh, fair enough. For those who are going on to be biologists, it's probably a key step. You know what? You know what I mean. But how many biologists are there in, on the planet? Not everybody who. who, who um, no, I think you can learn something from everything. 
So I, I think something can be learned. Yeah, fair enough. But not everything is reapplied later in life, is it? Mm. Whereas, whereas if they'd let me do my art, what I wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. everything that I learnt in that class would have been applied knowledge that I can give to you now today. That's what I'm saying. It, it, some sometimes education can be one of the worst blockers of of learning. Well, because, the, because just, sometimes education can be one of the worst blocks to learning. That's what you're saying. So, what what do you see as a, a solution or an alternative? Um, people being given the choice to decide what it is that they want to learn. No, here's what I think. If you had parents that could have put you in a private school, that's what my now, now my oh, half brother, my half brother, he failed kindergarten. He failed kindergarten. My stepmother, which is his mother, right away took him out of public school, and he spent his whole years from again um, K through had to do for be kindergarten K through twelve in a pri in private schools, and there they pretty much. I mean, they're pretty good. I mean, lenient. I mean, sure. let you do like alternative kind of education styles. Yeah, fair enough. But they're expensive and they're not there for everybody either. There are yeah. educational facilities that will cater for specialized environments like kids that have got disorders and, and yes, yeah. you know, learning I, disorders. Fair many, enough. We're, many we're years ago. About, yeah. yeah. We're, we're talking about education for your average everyday kid. Okay, Over I want to say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, Many on. years ago when you were going to school, they didn't treat learning disabilities like you had dyslexia, you have dyslexia the same mm -hmm. way. They're they're actually they're they weren't so aware of it or how to deal with it or and now they are they know much more knowledgeable about how to help kids. Yeah, still kids get pressurized into um being taught things that realistically they don't want to. It, well, it should be absolutely the choice of the child. I think that there's some in some element you can give them some choice, but in some in some way you also have to encourage them to do something different because they might not they might not know until they try it that they liked it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and that that's why a lot of people at uh, once have left the educational system actually start to learn mm -hmm. because they, because they try things themselves why do you think that there's so many people uh, on on this environment on youtube who, who come into learning art at a later stage in the life oh i know one thing i know one reason why because a lot of times it only took one teacher one parent one person tell them to give them some kind of negative comment or negative reaction to mm -hmm. their art and it could have been more than one time but i know somebody it only took one time from a, a negative a negative reaction from an art teacher when he was only in um sixth grade and it stopped him from doing art for 10 years he didn't pick it up again until he was 22. Cool. at yeah. age 12 he stopped because he got a negative reaction from an art teacher I mean, because I were a little rebel at school, it didn't make a jot's worth of difference to me. I, I listened to what they got to say, and then I just thought, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I think one of the first things you need to learn uh, at school is everything that we learn is just a matter of opinion. Carolyn... I'm sorry, Carolyn wants to know what you're painting. You're pa Carolyn, he's painting a Cuban um, Cuban street scene from Cuba. It, it's very abstract at this moment in time. So, and I'm just trying to let it, you know, uh, settle down a bit because I'm putting way too much paint on it at the moment. Now, so, Carolyn says um, they have to start out with a broad variety until they see what they're interested in. Yeah, but some kids already know what they're interested in. Listen, by the time I got to school, 
our drawing and painting at a level that were better than teacher. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I already knew what, and yet that were totally ignored. And that and was totally ignored, ignored, you said? Completely ignored. Oh, God. Until very much later when they realised that I had some problems with learning. And they let me sit down and watch painting with Nancy at dinner time. They put a TV programme on and painting with Nancy and they used to let me sit there and watch it. Because most of my school day, I was like a lab rat. People like have come in from I don't know what you're saying. A lab, a lab rat. Oh, God. I don't know what word you're saying. I was... I was, like, was like, a, like a, lab a lab rat, rat. Oh, a lab rat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like you said, they didn't know an awful lot about learning dis uh, disabilities. That's right. Uh, and, and they used to bring people in from universities who were learning about all these things. And they used to spend hours and hours and hours testing me with all sorts of weird things. And that was my school day. So while all other kids were learning other things, I was sat in a flipping test room being prodded and poked. Oh, for them testing you? Yeah. I don't but how long they testing you for? Like the whole year, not the well, whole year? Well, as soon as I found out that I was dyslexic, and just take into account this were in, like, late 70s, uh, it, it, I was like, oh, like a pot of gold to them, research-wise. So, because there weren't that many people that they figured out were dyslexic. It, it was something cutting-edge and brand new. Right, yeah, that's right. That's, what, that's the problem that could... That made the mess things up, and there were all sorts of different. There are all sorts of different, like, full, you know, um, people who deal with that kind of psychology, coming out with all sorts of different ideas on how to how to resolve it, and that were very naive, to be frank. Uh, you don't resolve things like that. It's a it's a it's a, an issue you have to deal with for the rest of your life as long as you live. But there are ways of getting around it. Now, Einstein was dyslexic too. Yeah. Uh, probably the most intelligent person who ever lived. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be frank, yeah. And I'm not being disrespectful to anybody else who's lived, but uh, how many of us thought it uh, completely worked out how the universe exists and got it spot on? You know what I mean? And that's because he had an abstract mind. When 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 you're dyslexic, you you think of things in a completely he different a big, way. He was a big proponent of creativity, though. Yeah, we he were was a huge proponent and supporter of creativity. And that, that's it. That's that's the critically important thing. We have to teach one of the first thing, the human brain in real terms is a creative environment. That's what it, I it, say. It, 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 it figures, to be creative. It's there to figure things out and, and, and work around issues. If we take creativity out of education, mm -hmm. then we're taking humanity out of education. We were created to be creative. Yeah. And in fact, we're all creative beings, but not necessarily creative in art. There's so many ways to be creative. No, no, cre like cre Einstein, Einstein was not an artist, but he was creative no. in scientific thinking. Yeah, it, it's the thinking process. It's, it's, it's the ability to... I don't like using this word very often, but in Einstein's uh, case, it, it was fairly relevant uh, thinking outside of the box right 
it's outside of the box thinking like everybody else thinks this way and then there's an issue and you resolve it by doing it in a completely different way which is creative that is not art art is one way of being creative that's right but, one way of being creative that's not the only way but um yeah i hope we're not boring people with philosophy i don't know yeah we lost <laughs> the people there's only seven people in the chat but here mm. let's see sleep i gotta read some of the chat slee stack says just a reminder that sunday is groundhog day primarily yeah. groundhogs eat eat grasses clover mm. alfalfa and dandelions and you may need to go to the store. So, I can go to the store and help so, feed. So, so they need like feeding or is that what ground dog day is? You actually oh, feed, I don't have you actually, feed. You actually no, feed. I never feed heard them. about feeding groundhogs. That's the first time I've heard him. He's just encouraging people to feed them, but I've never heard of that. And it's also it's in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm where it's the official groundhog it's one groundhog and it rises out of his hole does he see a shadow or doesn't he and if he sees a shadow that means we have six six weeks more left of winter and if he doesn't see a shadow then we then we're going to have a shorter winter so oh no, and mm. let me just say what Mystic said. Mystic says teachers should always be encouraging, especially with younger students. Mm. I was good at memorizing stuff, and I wanted a part at the school play, and they gave me one line, and oh. my confidence was destroyed. And we, we could be online now with Mystic Unigon, the famous actress. No, no. Yeah. Because, because one one act of uh, stupidity, that person has not now gone down that creative line, which is sad, really, isn't it? Right. When people do that, they're almost creating your life for you. But I no, they're not creating your life for you. I think that and if you still had the interest, like if you still had this, the interest, you yeah. you could say, no, I'm not letting that person, that, that horrible comment that that person made or that horrible situation that happened a long time ago dictate and what I'm going to do. And I still have a great passion for such and such thing. And I and I still want to try I, and, I, and I still want to um, try you know, go for it and sure, go that. develop that, develop that talent or ability, even though a long time ago, somebody said I couldn't like that guy said for 10 years, he didn't do art, but act, eventually after 10 years, um, he, he started drawing again. So, um, what that leads me on to is that's the kind of tenacity we, we know that there's people out there that would try to squash our creativity as adults and it can be done it, 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 fair enough it might not be just one comment from somebody oh your art's rubbish you know it, it might be that you end up like packing in because somebody says your art's rubbish but more often than not it's people scratching away at you that people uh, fall back on the creativity. So th there's a lesson and to they be learned. Fall back on their creativity because why? Because because people scratch away at people's um, like creative armor. Y you know what we just talked about when when we said. Uh, we can kind of, or when a teacher tells us, oh, you're not good, or you're rubbish at this, and we kind of like, we put his hands on his ears and, and ignore him <sighs> because of his own tenaciousness, 
and we continue going on with the things that we want to do, well, we still got to do that as an adult because there's certain people in and around the creative environment who will turn around to you and say, your art's rubbish, you can't paint, you can't, you know, you know, or they'll make snide remarks about your creativity. And, and that, slowly but surely, over a period of time, scratches away at your, at, at your creative armour. Okay, what what age range are you? What age are you talking about? Any age? Especially as adults, yeah. Oh, especially as adults. Yeah, as an adult, we're not immune to people telling us that. Uh, yeah, that's right. You're right. Um, you know, and, and some people are nasty. Well, they don't say it directly like that. Or they'll they'll be snide about it, or they'll leave a, a comment that just don't fit the bill, or. And what we have to do is remind ourselves of what we were like when we were kids. If we were tri if we were learning to do our something that we wanted to do when we were kids, and then adults said to us, "You're not doing that. You're not good enough." And yet you went on and you did it. Yeah. You've got to have that kind of spirit in you and say, yeah. "Stuck you. I'm not doing it because you like it. I'm no, doing it right. because I want to do it." And that's the ground basis for any creativity. You're doing it because you want to do it. So that's... Let me read some of the chat. So Norgus R says, I had art class in 1972 in the second grade. Mm -hmm. I, I, I um, missed, she forgot to say something, but she says, but I had art class in 1972 in the second grade but have painted and drawn since I could hold a pencil. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I see what she's saying. And then she goes, that is the only thing I was encouraged in by my parents. Oh, that's almost like me too. That's like me too. Like that's one of the, that's one of the things my mom really encouraged in me too was my art. That, that was one of the only things that she did was my <laughs> art. Right. That's well, similar. I mean, even, even with that, I, I've had no. But I think that's what's created a, a, that level of resilience in me. Uh, it's because it, nobody actually believed in the me ability to actually do it. Even your parents. And, uh, even my parents said, "What are you doing that for? Get a proper job." Mm. <laughs> no, like as a kid. I, I mean, just so I, I mean, how narrow-minded is that? No, no. Uh, wait a minute. When you, uh huh. I know, I know they were trying to be right with me, but um, uh, look at look at the jobs these days that uh, exist within creative art and how much money you can actually make from creative art if you're any good at it. There's you loads can. of opportunities. You can. Not, I mean, when I was growing up, there weren't that many, you know, there weren't that much. It, it, it was limited yeah. to the very, 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 very best of artists. Yeah. And nowadays, that's not the case because no, we, live in a very, uh -huh. we live in a, we live in a very uh, visual environment, and artwork needs to be created all the time. That means there's more work for people uh, in the creative environment, and it opens up a lot more uh, for people who've got different ways of creating. You know, like yes, yes. More, more abstract, more you know, outside the box is promoted that it's encouraged yeah. now. So it's a different environment these days. And okay, you can't, didn't, you can't, didn't hmm. your parents when you were really young you said you could draw very paint and draw very good when you were young, like better oh. than your teachers? Oh. Did your parents see that and like um give you uh give my, me my parents used to give me a little you know. Uh, it was a cheap way of getting a toy because I didn't want toys. I wanted a pencil and some paper. So they bought me bits of paper and stuff, but they didn't ever, like, send me anywhere to learn anything. Uh, and then when it got to the age where I had to choose a career and something like that, they weren't very happy when I wanted to do graphic design. They thought I should go into some sort of manual labour job, 
which I'm not built to be able to do that kind of oh. thing. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Where am I? Oh, I just jumped onto somebody else's live stream. Oh, no. right. and, and I was just about to say hello to somebody, but mm -hmm. okay, nope. I, it was just you know, some I said, hello. I do, I just here live stream, and I'm not going to say this time. Yeah. Hello, wrong number. It's so tricky with this touch screen, but I mean, I'm devoted to my iPad. But with a touch yeah. screen, you go like this, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm almost all of a sudden, it's like honestly, that's honestly, the worst thing that can happen. Touch screen technology you can keep it. Oh. So every time I try going on. Uh, Anything that's touch screen, it literally. You have a problem. I, I've got I've got dumpy fingers. Okay. Got, well, got, not got, for you. Then. Not for you. Um, look, my fit right is my mobile phone. Right, I know it's not massive. Oh, that's hard because right. everything's really small. Right, right. Is my thing? My fingers are nearly as big as this mobile phone. Yeah. Right. So I'm asking, they, they have these little tiny little letters. Yes. 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 Go, yes. It's like no, can't no do it. You talk to text then. Talk. You have to talk it in. Oh yeah, have you tried that? I have. Well, I haven't. <laughs> it's pretty good. Every I know it to make stupid mistakes, but for, it's like a pretty good alternative. It, well, yeah. I mean, for for those who haven't got an option, you know that maybe have problems with the motor systems in the house. My vision, because of my vision. <laughs> and things like that yeah for 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 people who have various forms of disability in that sense then yeah it's it's a good option wait mystic let's let 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 me read some things from the chat mystic says yeah i've had well anyway she, first of all she said i yes i could have been an actress but she goes if i had had been an actress i probably wouldn't have had my daughter right now and then she says yeah i've had friends say if your parents say you can't you cannot then one of your goals should be to prove them wrong not exactly the best type of encouragement or mm -hmm. mindset but sometimes you need to you need a negative push yeah uh, I, I get that it, it, it kind of inspires you to go on to you know it, uh, it gives you your resilience, doesn't it? So much to fight against. I, I fully get that. But um, when it's constant, the uh, thing is, it's all right if you've got that tenacious attitude. But if you're a, a person that shrinks back when uh, you come under attack, then there's a likelihood of you losing that willingness to want to continue on. Not that that's your fault. It's just sometimes, although sometimes um, people, you know, get it. Uh, giving your negative comments is sometimes meant to try and g you up a bit it, it you've got to be ever ever so careful because uh it might be the thing that pushes you over the edge and stops you from ever doing it ever again so a person who does do that they've got to know as and when and how far to push that i i, I know of some uh, artists who said exactly that that the, uh, the the teachers were like negative towards them and it gave them that extra push to um, better themselves but it, it's an extremely um, you got to be a, incredibly careful how you word things and what you do to say all that kind of stuff well i have a question for somebody in the chat norgas R, um because she was in, that was the only thing that she was encouraged in was her art by her parents and, and then she goes i would go in the corner and and um 
um, do her artwork. And then she goes, that is why I do hats because she does crazy hats Friday on her channel. That mm -hmm. is why, I, or maybe she makes hats. I don't know. That is why I do hats, painting, and even add the painting on my face. Because, uh, oh, because of, um, because of uh, what your influence from your parents is that oh is that what you're talking about? Okay, that was my question to her. Uh huh. So, I mean, we've got we'll, we all have all sorts of influences, don't we? Don't yeah, we're we totally not even talking about what we're painting about. <laughs> is it is it total dis well? It's creative just dis it's discussion about creativity and stuff though, and art. Mm. Art, I mean, artistic talent and art, art act and um i mean i could have gone into rant of the week by an hour but uh, i'm not i'm holding back <laughs> why you want to do a rant of the week no there's a time and a place for rant of the week okay that that's at the beginning right no it's at the what? end today it's, it's at 11 o'clock because you tell me you want to see hear my rant at the beginning and i say Okay, oh, today. No, no honestly, to my rant. you know, whenever you're ready for your rant, is good enough for me. Now, did you write it down this week? Write it down? No, I made a video of it on my second I, channel. No, no, well, that that that's that's on your other channel. We need a rant of the week for for this one. Oh, okay. Well, that was still this week, but anyway, I I do have a rant. Go on, man. It's about people that text and drive. It's so dangerous. Um, so many times people are looking. So I can't see inside people's windshields, but my when because my vision disability, but my husband can constantly. He's saying their head is down on their left. They're not paying attention. It's like constantly, and it's like one time when I wasn't, I was not in the car, but my husband had to swerve, swerve into. I mean, uh -huh. a, a car swerved into his oncoming lane and and then quickly swerved out once their head popped up from having had their head looking down which we assume that their head was mm -hmm. looking down at their texting so that's my rant um, I mean, people, please do not text and drive you would have thought that in a civilized country like the usa that um being uh, driving and being on the phone or texting at the same time would be an offence under law, like it is it in, is. in, please, in please don't catch them enough. I well, think do you not have cameras watching the road twenty four hours a day? Only at um traffic intersections. Not not on a not on a like a long stretch of road. It's only on traffic intersections where if somebody mm -hmm. runs a red light they can they can take a picture of your license plate. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's that, that's the only thing. They are making cars now that have special GPSs in them that uh, can track wherever you are at any one time. Right. Right. And if they, uh, it, it it can then shut down your your phone. That's what they should do. I wish they would make all the cars like that. Well, people shouldn't be on them uh, when they're driving. The only time you, you know, if you have to get out of the vehicle. Exactly. So, um, My husband's seeing it all the time. Then, I mean, drives me crazy. He's seeing it all the time happening. Every time we go out for a drive, just for a short drive, just even, even just to the gym, which is three minutes away. He sees people, and then if and then if we have to go out to eat, the other time we do is if we have errands to do, just go to the pet store like today. Oh, it's all a part, all a part of that instantaneous lifestyle that people have. You know, it's it's like everything's got to be there at that very moment. I know. I don't understand. Yeah, that's right. Like, so. Don't they see the danger in it? I just don't get it. Well, they probably do. It's just that they're prepared to take that risk. 
they think, oh, nothing will happen to me. That's the other thing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's not going to happen. Nothing will happen to me. No, no, no. A lot of people have that. No, nothing. It's not going to happen well, to me. I mean, anybody caught, anybody caught uh, going, driving uh, and doing that, they should be took to an orientation place where they show them people's bodies who, who've died. Oh, yeah. I think that's what they do with drunk drivers, people that are caught. Because I almost think that that's almost well, just it, as I mean, it, it really doesn't matter what way. Uh, oh, yeah, right. If, if, right. Drink, if they drink driving or, or they're taking drugs while they're driving or, or they're using a mobile phone or they're doing something that's not legal so that they're not they're distracted away from the process of driving, which is an odd thing in, in, in any case, isn't it? Um, then they should either be completely banned from driving or made to go through an orientation that learns them about how precious life is. Oh. So, look, life yeah. is precious. I, I know you don't think it is, but it's precious. Oh, now, Mystic Unicorn says, yeah, but if you use your phone GPS to navigate, you're screwed. Oh, okay. So no, they're not. They're I don't not. know. Can't you no. have a talk? You can have a talking GPS. Uh, we're not. We're not. We're not talking about um, things that help you navigate. No, we're but the, about, yeah. We're talking about being on the phone with your friend or texting somebody or. Oh, oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, did, did, did Cynthia say that? Did the blah, 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 blah. Yes, we're talking about that. But if people have their head looking down because they're looking at some G, their GPS on their phone, that's not good either. That that's why your GPS can talk to you. That that mm -hmm. you should be making your GPS talking to you. So I, I don't know. I why couldn't uh, Mystic Unigon? Um, why couldn't you make your GPS be talking? I mean, well, thing is, you need to see where you're going on the map sometimes, right? But you, you shouldn't be distracted for more than a second or two away from looking out of the window, because even even a second away from the uh, uh, looking at what you're doing, you can lose control of that vehicle or, or a vehicle in front of you could have slammed anchors on. And um, bye and take care. And thank you for thank you so much for stopping by, Norgus R. She has to leave. Thank you so much. See you later, Norgus. And grayscale painting is showing emojis of smiling. I think I don't know if it's laughing. No, it's not laughing. It's not the laughing one. It's the smiling one. It for at you. Oh, very good. All right, here's Mystic Unicorn. She goes, it can talk, but not if the car is built to turn it off. Plus, there's auto vent clips to hold your phone up. Okay. Yeah, um, no, 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 not saying that you can't. It, it's the culture of using your phone that's the big problem well, using your phone it, while you're it, it, it should only be used in a, the extremist of cases when you need to yeah human brains need to concentrate on driving yeah you shouldn't multitask don't, that. Don't, yeah don't be multitasking when you're driving oh there's other ways i've seen people multitasking like putting their makeup on while they're driving yeah shaving while they're driving i've heard of that i, I don't i've never seen a man shaving while you're driving I've, not, I've never seen a man shave when driving i've heard i heard of that but um putting putting lipstick on like maybe that's okay but putting like eye makeup on and face makeup on and all that <laughs> makeup, that's not right. over familiarity you think you're in control of things but 
that you don't know what's coming up against you. And yet you need to be alert. And if you're not, and, and your concentration is not there for that split second. Oh, it's a split second too. Split second that accident happens. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's been absolutely banned in UK. It, you can get a prison sentence uh, for driving while um, uh, driving and uh, using your phone. No, oh, you mean driving and talking on your phone, even, or and, driving and texting? And texting, using your phone, full stop. Even driving and talking on your phone? Well, you can't do that now, as far as I know. So, because well, the the safest thing is to um have the Bluetooth. The thing is, what they say, well, what they say is, at the end of the day, while ever you are like faffing about pressing buttons to make things work, you're not concentrating. Right. You the, it's not that you're not holding it. Because you can get them cradles it's the fact that you're actually taking your mind away from looking out of the windscreen to look at you know if you're trying to find somebody's phone number in your index thing in your in your phone book number thing you've got to press certain buttons aren't you and meanwhile you're not looking at where you should be looking which is the um Outside of the window. Oh, I mean, Mystic Unicorn says, um, not everyone can afford a Garmin. G A R M I N. I don't know what that is. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not a current driver. I have a vision disability. So it's my husband that does the driving. So I don't know what a G A R M I N is. She says, not everybody can afford a Garmin. No. But it, 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 it's, it really is still down to uh, should we use it while we're driving? It doesn't matter how much you can afford or not afford. It's should we use it while we're driving? And should we answer, put it on you? Yeah, uh, the answer is no. no. You've got plenty, plenty of time to use your phone when you're not driving. And then if you if you wanted to talk on your phone, there is the Bluetooth that can come through the like more modern cars. The Bluetooth comes through the dashboard and can talk and you can be talking and you don't have to hold anything. Both your hands are on the steering wheel and you're talking like Bluetooth through the the, the dashboard. The, the sound the sound of somebody the sound of the conversation is coming through your dashboard. That, both that, yeah. on the wheel. But um, it, it, it's it's the action of um, oh hello flower glamorous. She's a big flower gardener. All right. Nice to see you. We're talking about um. We'll move on now. Well, we have, well, Ian says we should move on, but we have been talking about the dangers of texting and driving. For me, that, well, texting and driving is just horrible. Well, I mean, like I, I said, I don't, driving. I, I don't have so much of a problem with that, but texting and driving, you have to be, have your eyes somewhere else. Like when you're talking on your phone and you're driving, you yes, you can have your eyes on the road, but I don't have so much of a problem yeah. with that. Texting and driving is just is just horrible, and and my husband sees it all the time because I don't drive because of my vision disability. But my husband sees it all the time, and he's saying, "Oh, they're driving. They're not paying attention. Look, come on, come on, come on!" And I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" Even when we just t take short errands, we don't drive, we don't do long distance driving. We're just like going to the gym, doing errands, going to the grocery store. And so many times he's seeing people texting and driving. Well, it's, it's, it's all down to that uh, issue that's 
creeping into society and that instant gratification. Yeah, the instant gratification. Can we not wait until we get into a better position to actually use this phone? Instant gratification. And then Flower Glamour says, me too, she don't like it. It's right. So I'm not telling people very much about this painting, am I? But, no, I know. That's sidetracked. So maybe you want to talk about your painting? Oh, not really. But if we've got something else to talk about, we can. It's just Hold that on, what, I'm, oh, wait a what I'm doing is I'm I'm starting to build up um, shadows in it and, and linking everything together by means of shadows. And he, well, let me tell you what he's paying, painting. He's painting a Cuban city street scene. Mm. And apparently in Cuba, they, they're really big on the vintage cars and they keep them in very good condition and they drive around in their vintage cars. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. So what I'm going to do is um i'm i'm not gonna leave you may not see this it's, it may be very subtle but um me me shadows that i'm making they're not going to be just one uni one color uh, flower glamour says she glamorous says she loves those cars and, and would nice. most of them are a certain kind of car, or is it many different kinds uh, of vintage cars? Different brands, but they were what they were most of them. They were like 1950s American style. Um, Studebakers? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about American cars. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. The, the lot of 1950s cars. Yeah. Right, late 1940s, early 1950s cars. Uh, and they have very, very specific shapes. Uh, and the, you, think about, you think about the Bat car, you know, Batman and Robin from the t original TV series with the wings on the end of them. They have them on them and the, I don't know. The, I have a question. I'm do you have that flower painting? I think it was, you did it last week, right? The flower painting? Which flower painting? You, you did a flower watercolor. Uh, what, which one? The poppy or, or the one that we did? Oh, on the, the, one, live? the one you did here um, on the live will, stream. Uh, yeah, I've got it somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you, do you have it handy? Could you show it online? Because um, show it on Thanks, the camera. Because Flower Glamorous is, she's a huge. Flower gardener. Uh, well, let's just have a look because I don't know where I put it. It's not that. Hey, no, hey, welcome back. Is it these? Nope. Uh, welcome back, to Stack Rules. Hey. Oh, fl flower glamorous. Yeah, she's saying, telling everybody to share out the live. Yeah. Not that one, not that one, not that one. I've done over 34 paintings this month. This this week? How this about month. this week? No, no, no. The one that you just, you did it. I'm I'm sure you, you did flowers last week. I think it was last yeah. week. Where have I put it? It's not with all my normal paintings. Uh, it's not that one. Uh, how about that one? Yeah, that's it. That's the one. There's yeah. that's the flower of. He's not Ian. You, Ian, you're not big on painting. I mean, you love painting flowers, but it's not your. It's not painting, something you do on a regular basis. He doesn't do it often, and so he painted flower painting last week. So, flower glamours. I just wanted you to see. Um, he doesn't paint them often, but he painted this flower watercolor last week on our live stream. 
What kind of flowers are those? That's that's a poppy. Oh, a poppy. It's a very abstract image. I mean, very it could, be, abstract. it could be whatever flower you want it to be. But it's basically a, a poppy. I think you... It's, that's not the one we've been on. You did that on our live stream, but that's very nice. No, I did tulips, but I don't know where it is. Oh, yeah, your tulips painting. That's what that's what you painted last week. Could this be it? No. I don't know. I don't know where it is. Oh, you can't find it. Or at least you yeah, found that one. I might have put it away. I'm looking and I can't see it in the pile of the 30 of the. Splash. She said splash. Beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, old beer buzzard. And don't be fooled oh, by old beer buzzard. He's a poet with a poetry book and a poetry website with um this is what we did. spiritual spiritual poetry. Oh, that's the one you did last week. Okay. Oh, yeah. Of tulips. There's his there's yeah. his painting of tulips he did last week on our live stream. I'm I'm very itch and miss with flowers. You're what? I'm very itch and, I, I can't always get the delicacy that I want with it. Right. He, I am learning. So that's flowers. And tulips are a little bit different to uh, poppies in the sense that uh, they're a bit more heavy bodied and structured than a. a, a it's almost like a, a, a poppy is like crepe paper. Very, very. Oh, she says she loves the tulip. She says outstanding. Uh, whereas the the petals on on, on the, they're a lot harder and I don't know they're not they're not quite the same as a what you would have on a a, um, a poppy or some other more delicate to flower. Wait, but that's what right. we did live, didn't we? As I remember. Anyway, flower glamour says she loves that. It's outstanding and um. Yeah. So there's, there's other besides no, no, while, yeah. this one. what was that that's the city street scene yes oh and um and um mystic nice. Unicorn, that's great you're writing poetry she goes that reminds me she wanted to finish writing her poet her poem awesome mm -hmm. Well, again, it's another another form uh, of creativity. Creativity, isn't it? Because that can it, that might lead you someone, you know, a piece of poetry by someone might energize an artist to paint a, a great piece of artwork that's revealed. Oh, right. You know. You never know who you're going to influence in that sense. And it's just like a few words that someone like writes down and, you know, really puts passion into that sparks an interest in that other person. And you never know. Oh, that's what happened to me when I, because I, I took an online class and she's a poet and a painter and she was including some of her poetry in the painting in her in her painting online class and right. for my not my last video but the video before the last the last two videos before my very last video is about poetry and painting and i was very inspired by her mm -hmm. to, and i included some of my own poetry with painting uh, uh gracie wanted to know where you're painting what 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 you're painting or where and she he's painting a cuban city um city street scene oh maybe other people wanted to know that yeah he's painting um ian is painting a cuban city street scene with um showing some vintage cars because in cuba they love their vintage american cars i, th I think it's just like over years it's become synonymous with these you know, I, I think because they're under like a like a, a regime, uh, they couldn't get cars, and the only cars that they had were cars 
that were around before that regime came into power. So people had to like keep the 1950s cars in pristine condition. They've started nowadays getting more cars there, modern cars, but it's become such a thing that it, it's like it's got the world's biggest collection of American old cars. It's got more American old cars in Cuba than there is in America. No, because most of these cars in America are uh, in museums now. Right. Well, no, we have a lot of those um, vintage cars when they, because we have a lot of car shows that go on and oh, yeah. then people bring out their vintage, well-maintained well vintage cars and, and in show Cuba, them many, many car shows that we have around the country. People in Cuba drive these cars around on a daily basis. It's like the normal form of transport. There is no modern cars there. Really? Oh, very, very, very few. Oh, they have to buy like other, they have to buy cars from other countries. They, yeah, of course, they don't make cars in Cuba, so. Well, it, it, it's been under a, a, a dictatorship for, I don't know what it is now. I think it's, but it's been under a dictatorship for last, well, since Cuban Missile Crisis in early 1960s. So, or whenever that were, I can't remember. Oh, I like what old Beer Buzzard said. Don't be fooled by his name. Let me say it again. He's a poet. He has a poetry website. He's written a poetry book. And he just said, he said, I finally wrote the greatest Chucky songs. I guess he writes sometimes he might write makes lyrics for songs, um, songs ever written. He says, Old age has brought out my bold side. LOL. Oh yeah, that's great. We're talking I mean, about old age. We don't stop doing things in, in older age. We don't just stop doing things. Listen, uh, there's a, an artist, you might know him, called Turner, right? He didn't do his best works until he were in his Late eighties. Oh, late eighties. Yeah. Turner, I know Turner, right? In his late eighties. Eighties ish, yeah. Whoa! I hope that's me. I can do some of my greatest work, like um, no, late, that, I'm older. That's much older that, than that I. Am. Is, that is a, the case with a lot. I mean, there are some young artists who blaze a trail very early in their life. Yeah, fair enough, but they're not very often. Uh, art, art is something that uh, is matured over many, many years. And no, but that's what we hear about all that. I don't. That's like it's hard to say. Like, oh, is it the younger people that can do the great, great art? Because we hear about that more. Because it seems like it's more of an, an anomaly that we hear about older artists like Grandma Moses. Oh, Grandma Moses, she became very well known in her seven in her seventies or so, in her seventies and eighties. Well, it, when you're at that kind of age, and I don't know yet because I'm not, but you're more self-assured so you can you can set or oh, and you've got a lot more years of experience you, you can go to a piece of artwork and go i'm going to do it like that like that and like that and it's going to work and nine times out of ten it will do because you've got the experience if, if you're a younger artist in your early 20s you're going to do the same painting but you're going to go oh i wonder whether that's going to work or i wonder whether that'll work and, and there's that that slight you know anxiety in it and that can show in your painting when a when a person knows what they're doing in their artwork it shows they just go just 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 done if this were alvaro casting painting it it'd have this done in 10 minutes it just go boop 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 and how and old is he? Is it is quite a bit older than uh, uh, us? I mean, what, how it, it was early sixties. Early sixties. I think so. I'm not under. Well, that's not quite a bit older than me. Well, 
if you're saying he's early 60s, that well, that's a good advantage. That's a good age, but that's a good older age. But I'm just saying that's not that's that to me, it, it's a, a mature artist. Somebody who's in the 60s is a mature artist. And yeah, they, they're mature artists, but it doesn't mean that they're established artists because there's the there's oh, no, emerging, no. there's emerging, there's mid career, and there's established artists. And um, I know like some sometimes like oh yeah, Grandma Moses. So in the seventy when she was in her seventies and eighties, she was an emerging artist in her seventies and eighties because she didn't start really painting until her seventy or when she was in her seventies or eighties. So that makes her an emerging artist. Back then, when she first started. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm more talking about individuals who've been painting all their lives. Oh, hi, yeah. Jen. What about art? Some she people. Said, yeah, that's gorgeous, <laughs> man. Thank you. Um, some people uh, do take up art later in their lives, and and strangely enough, make a success of it. I don't know how that's done. I mean, if, if I, if I, uh, on a, um, if I'd have not had the years of experience that I've had painting all my life, I very much doubt that I'd be anywhere close to where I am now. Some people need to take the time about learning. And different, yeah, different, different paces, different paces. Yeah, and, and yeah, you can get somebody who's painted for. A couple of years, get it totally. And I know, I know totally. people like that on YouTube. And you go, how are they doing that? I know they just painted for a few years, and already they have uh, they have a great painting. I know one lady, and oh, she painted for you a years a great painting, acrylic painting channel. You you will find that those people are not particularly broad in what they do. They they do tend to be, you know. If they specialize in face painting, that's what they're no, doing. No, no, no. She's not. She doesn't spend. She is broad in what she does. She actually is broad well, in what she does. I'm, I'm, I'm talking generally speaking. All right, generally um, speaking. Uh, most people who get good fast at something, it's because the they've specialized in something and they've they've dug deep, really, really high focus. Into something. Oh, well, here's a question from Gracie. Um, mm -hmm. Ian, how do I improve on painting shadows? Well, I'm showing you now. That, she says, what, "Thank what, you. Your art is beautiful." What? What you? I know. I'm, uh, we're not. I'm not really talking about my art, am I? Yeah. Uh, we, we're talking about sideline issues. I know. We uh, just keep talking about tons of different things. Uh, besides well, right. we're talking about creativity. The most then. important thing is what we've do, done in this painting is defined where light is and it's there. Right? So we need to get things that, uh, uh, although I'm going to have to darken that because it's in shadow. So it, it's knowing where to place the shadows and uh, not using black or universally because you'll have warm shadows and light uh, and cool shadows and they'll be different and, and you have to look and be, say right on my reference image or whatever you're using is it a bluey a, a, a bluey shadow or is it more uh, a purpley red shadow and, and and you have to mix them in and another thing as well at your edges, which is now I've, now that's dried, is is nip out some of the edges. Not all of them, but at least some of them. And so the thumbs up, everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. What are you saying? You have to nip out what? You have to nip out some of the edges. Because oh, hard edges. The, 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 the farther away you get from the object that's casting shadow. Oh, softer edges. The softer the edges get. Yeah, okay. The lighter it gets. 
so you have to take that into account as well that that's something else that you have to think about when you're doing but the, the real point of this particular painting is connecting everything up in the picture using the shadows because that uh, helps a lot painting no i don't i don't have you ever been to cuba i don't think you have but have you um it's not one of them countries i've ever been to no okay you've been to the philippines all right nope no yeah <laughs> his wife's filipina so filipina yes mrs jackson the filipino although oh, she isn't now plan, oh no i remember you said you plan on moving there and, and maybe well, in the future. It, it's a bit it's a bit weird because uh, uh, she she made herself a British citizen. Oh, that's just recently. Well, about about a year and a half ago. Oh, did she have dual citizenship? No, you can't have it. Oh, you can only have you can only have dual citizenship if if one or you uh, both of your parents uh, from two different countries. Wow. Oh. Okay. You can only have citizenship of one nation. Oh, I don't know. That's not true in the United States, I don't think. Well, how, how can you be a citizen of two countries? I I know it. it I know it is there. I know it is, but I I mean it occurs. And but I'm I'm not sure what the stipulations for for having dual citizenship is. Well, generally, it's because you you've got two parents of two separate. Maybe, yeah, that's right. And that's generally the only reason why you get citizenship, or dual citizenship. Gracie says, ha, 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 had a rant yet, guys? Oh, yes, I had a rant. I mean, this I made entire... on my, um, my new second channel about, but I'm not going to say it was about, but, and, but my rant today was about um, people texting and driving. Mm. So it should be. And then Alicia, Alicia from a cup of tea, five minutes, cup of tea, and five minutes free. That's the, that's the name of her second channel. Mm -hmm. She said that's beautiful, Anne. Well, thank you, Alicia. I, I did pop by uh, the other day. What her cup of her second channel, a yeah. cup of tea, five minutes free. Uh, she having a little bit of a, a, a rant about um, people. Oh, that one! I saw that one. Comment. Her rant about the 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 grow streams. Yes, I think it were. Yes. Yes, yes, I saw that. That was just yesterday. Well, uh, I've, I've got to say, I'm uh, I take them with a bit of a pinch of salt, to be frank. What do you mean? Um, because some some people will say, "Oh, I've, I've become your friend," and all that sort of right. stuff. But you can you can tell when per, a, a person has uh, subscribed to you because you get a you, you get a notification telling you. And if you don't get a notification, no, then... no. Did you know that if they want to choose, they can choose if they want to keep their subscriptions private. That means mm. you'll never know whether they subscribe to you or not unless they tell you. Oh. You can never see it. I'm trying not to be negative at this point, but if 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 they want to remain private like that, I don't really want them there. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? It, it's supposed to be an open platform, so we all because I, what do I know who they are? I don't know. I just feel I, I feel a bit. No, I see what you mean. You know what I mean? I keep mine public because so that people would know that if I've subscribed to them or not. That's why I want them to know. I mean, what reason is there to be? I mean, it, it's a social network. Yep. So what what reason is there to be private? Fair well, enough. You don't have to hand over. I'm not. I'm not asking people to like hand over every detail about their lives. I'm not at all. But you know. If, I, if you're exactly. on social networks, 
Grayscale painting just said something that I just like totally agree with. He said, Grayscale painting said, your center building in your painting reminds me of the flat iron building in New York in New York City. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. It, it, it has it has a feel of that. You, yeah. you know why? This, this is an Italian, Italian style building, curved building, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, as uh, as little information I know about the flat iron building, that also is slightly Italian in its styling. So I suppose there is a connection between these two buildings in that sense. It it has like that it slightly, although the flat iron building is a bit more. Um, uh, Art Deco. Maybe. But this is a bit more um, Art Nouveau. Jen's wild about art says, this is looking incredible. Gracie says, Ian, wow, this is amazing. Thank you. And then Gracie, Gracie has a question for you. Is that a Winder and Newton Coleman watercolor palette or the Pro Paints? It, 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 it's the Windsor and this, right? Because I've not shown you. I ought to have done. Um, it's a Windsor and New, right? I was in an art shop and I found this. Now, that is uh, one of the Windsor and Newton. Um, it, it's the Cotman set. Cotman, that's it. Cotman. Right? Cool. It's a student's. And um but these paints are not the student paints i took the student paints out and i gave them to a friend and uh, i put the professional paints in it but it was only 19 pound the entire set anyway not not the paints but um i, I just didn't have any way to put any of these paints so i just transferred it into this Windsor and Newton um, thing. And it's a desk one, this, because it's not got one of those rings underneath it. So they're all right. And if you're starting as a beginner, uh, Cotman are okay. The, uh, they don't give you the true feeling of watercolour paint if you really want to do watercolor painting seriously you need to look at getting some professional paints and then you'll get the real feel of a watercolor um yeah. uh, students paints uh, are quite hard to work with in comparison to professional paints and you don't get the same quality from them just on the that is now my rant of the... Can you believe that? What's your know, rant? I, that's my rant of the week. You know, them Chinese, you know them Chinese brushes that oh, I bought? Oh, that, that. Chinese... It's nice. Look. Paper throat. Look. Look. What? Let me see. On, on, on the thing there. You know the thing that it... Uh, it, look at that it just broke it just broke like a, like when you first started oh my god I mean, uh, only thing I can do with that update you could put duct tape on it glue it and, and yeah maybe duct tape it but it's never it's always going to wobble I know it is I can't believe that's done that I don't know because it, it was made in it, China like look well, it was in China, that, does that mean it's cheap? Does that mean it's cheap because it was made in China? Yeah. Well, look, I've got loads of these kinds of brushes, but these, their stuff, right, that they're made of, it's made of really thick plastic. That's quite thin. And it's it, it's just snaps. So later on, I'm going to be doing a video on how to mend it. <laughs> Great Looks like I get it. The big painting palettes. Look at that! It's a new type of brush. How useless is that? That's disgraceful. 
Oh, well. I won't be buying them again. And that, do you know what? Ironically enough, I love the brush end. So I'm going to do something to, to mend it, even if I have to super glue, ender it, and then put, like you said, some duct tape around it. Or even some uh, cellulose and glue that. I would think only duct tape works. Well, we'll see. I've got some electrical masking tape, uh, electrical uh, tape that might do it. But we'll see. If it keeps wobbling, then it's going to be useless. But then again, I'll, I'll see if I can get some epoxy resin on it or something. <coughs> but it shouldn't do that, really. Not really. I've only had it uh, a month or so. Oh, um, you've only had that a month? Oh, no. that That's... I can't think of the word. Just really, really... I mean, if they were going to use that particular uh, type One of... One and it's broke already? Oh, come on. That's terrible. That, 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 should, that should have at least... Um, three or four wraps around it and i don't know just no it's just good that it i can actually rescue that really right anyway jogging on as we do right everybody see that, that happened right at the beginning of the live stream right before we like yeah, almost and it just went and yeah that his, his one of his favorite brushes that he, he bought from china it's a pointed mop brush is that right it is, yeah. hey, don't get me wrong i've got loads of pointed mop brushes i use them a lot oh. this is one this is one made by uh, jackson's but that's not as large the other one was oh, like jumbo. no this is a lot bigger than that one but this, oh. this, this because it's a lot bigger well look the other one was bigger, wasn't it? Let me say. Wait, hold it. Bring it down. Oh, they're almost the same size. Oh, yeah, but that's fatter. This brush is fatter. This oh, one okay. here. Oh, less uh, pointed. It's less pointed. It's more of a, less, it's more of a mop than a. This, yeah. this has got more of a point to it. But then again, I have got other brushes that are pointed. I mean, this is a this is a pointed mop. And that's got a really, really good point on it. Same kind of thing. I call quill brushes. But uh, oh well. These other Chinese brushes are going okay though. Hi, really Jen. Jen, Jen Wild about Jen Wild about art. Hello, Jen. I see that you're double streaming. You're you're live streaming and visiting my live stream. So, well, thank you very much for doing that. It's nice for you to visit. Um, and um, thank you. Yeah. Let's see what you're live streaming. That it's come, come draw, paint, and chat with Jen Wild about art. Well, anyway, thank you for visiting my live stream. It's very nice. And um, yep, I have a I have one of my um friends in here. Her name is. Her channel name is a cup of tea and five minutes free. It's a pretty long name, but yeah, that's her, that's her whole that's her whole channel name. A cup of tea and five minutes free. So she, and then Jen came in and said, "Yes, please, me too." White, white right. and um, sugar. She's talking about white and one sugar. Thanks. I don't know what that means? White and one sugar. I don't know. Oh, she it's said. A, it's a, over. I'm sorry. I'm it's still, you're still live. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, it, it, it says. It says on my. It says on my screen that. It says on my screen oh, that. The, are, but the, 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 the candle you for ages. I, I you were, um, at your own live stream. Thank you. I don't mean anything uh, bad for it. Um, I've I've noticed that that on YouTube it says that somebody's still live when I know they've gone yeah. off. Oh no, they leave the note so, so yeah. on the sign it says they keep making showing them being live even though they've they've left. She goes, Yes, me white and one sugar. 
Oh, maybe yeah. she means, when she says white, I bet she means cream. Well, not necessarily. It's milk and one sugar. If you have, cream, if, milk if, or cream if, and one sugar. Uh, I think that's what you mean, yeah. If, if it says white and one sugar, it means you're adding something to it to make it white. Oh, and not, yeah, not either milk or cream. That's right. Cream. She so says, ever... yes, says yes, milk, LOL. I hope your live stream went well. Thank, thank you for coming, jumping over here. Thank you so much, Jen, for jumping over here. I know, it's, I think I'm pretty much sure it's very early in the morning, Saturday morning for you. Thank mm. you. Oh, yeah. And, and then she says duct tape fixes everything. That's what I say. It, my, and that was the philosophy. My mother fixed everything with duct tape. Duct tape. What would do we add it? <laughs> she said, right. and Jen Wild about art said her, her um, live stream was good fun. Oh, hmm. oh, it's, or it's, oh, yeah. 10 a, she says it's 10 a.m. in Australia right now. Wow, 10 a.m. That's, that's, not, that's not super early, right. That's like a normal morning time, so that's good. Oh, oh, I've lost track of time what we have here. Oh, my goodness, I've lost track of time. Usually I check the time. Oh, it's right. Have you seen what it's, 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 I'm going to have to get a move on because I've just realized <laughs> I've got less than 10 minutes. We, we totally so, lost time. I know. I mean, I, I've got hardly out done here on there. I've, I've been no, doing, we've, 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 been, we've been chatting away and we've got no, nothing. Yeah, we totally have I mean, not taken the time. Oh, and Grayscale Painting, he visited Jen's Wild wild Bad Art and he said her bird was amazing. Oh, that's nice. I got to go check that out, Jen. Oh, mm -hmm. hi, JCT. Hi, JCT. Welcome. I hope you're feeling better. Are you finally feeling some i mean are you finally feeling significantly better jct because i know you, you had a cold or something a flu that was dragging on and we totally lost track of time we have it's all right because uh it's not going to be absolutely finished this because uh, i've just realized we, we just haven't got time. And Grayson so, said, Ian, beautiful painting. Love it. You, how, like, but you're almost done. Like, what, 20 more, 30 more minutes you have to put I'm, into it? I'm, I'm about 80% done. 80. Oh, oh, so, oh, what, 20% oh, oh, equal, equals like 30, 30 minutes or an hour? In this uh, case, I have every case is individual. Oh. It's, it's all down to individual situation, isn't it? Wait. You can't, you can't well, really... Uh, you need to add more colour in that car, right? Uh, no, it's white, actually. But I oh, will do it. Car? I'll, I'll, I'll make it orange. Because the shadow, like, overpowers the car, I think. Well, it's in the shade, isn't it? The sun's coming from there. So it's going to be... Right. So, uh, um, I'll, I'll put, it's, certainly, it's certainly not a focal. I mean, the focal point. The, you want the focal point to be that the buildings. Well, the buildings are the main focal point of the. Oh, um, I thought you wanted some of the cars to be some of the focal points. I, 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 I'm not really sure that this has an absolute focal point. Okay. Not every painting has a um a, a eyelid. It, it's one of them things where it. Um, it's more about the overall painting and how it all interlinks with rest of Or you mean like with not really one significant focal point? Yeah. Wow. It's valid in some cases a focal point, but not always. It's good. It's good for your eyes. What's good for your eyes? Uh, having a focal point, but it's not always critical. Oh, okay. 
Wait, what did what JC say? I'm trying to see if she says she's feeling better. I started feeling bad again. Oh no, goodness! I I guess that's what the flu is like. She, yeah, it can do. It can it can knock you back. Started feeling better oh, yeah, again. Oh, oh oh, maybe that's good. You started feeling better again. So yeah, maybe you're feeling better again now. Because that would be bad if like you started feeling better and then not feeling better. Okay. So you yeah you started feeling better. That's good. Oh, we have a, a question from Gracie. Right. Um, she says, oh, she's asking me, but you could help. Let's see. Diana, do you think I should paint the sea turtle for Wednesday? Yes, I told you that already. I, I think you should paint the sea turtle on Wednesday because we're starting a regular thing now. So what, you know, we're regular on Friday, but um, me and Gracie, we're going to paint together. Um every wednesday every every wednesday 1 p.m eastern standard time and she's um she's planning on a sea turtle yes i think you should paint the sea turtle because you have a lot of experience with it hello is ian still there i am still there yeah okay wait 557 Okay, and then she says, okay, guys, I'm calling you now. Amazing painting. And then she says, the hot milk always makes me sleepy. Grayscale painting. He says, the building on the left is angled toward the central building with oh, the perspective, wow. which kind of makes that mi middle building kind of the, the focal point. Uh, with photographs, uh, what I have actually done, if, if you look at the photo, uh, cameras tend to draw in like that, so buildings do look out of perspective. Um, the, the thing is, with this particular building, is I'm going to draw a line down there so you can literally... Uh, a lot of the light from the back is leaking around, so you're not seeing the edge of the building that obviously it, it's kind of like light leakage from the sun so you're not seeing that that much so that there isn't that there isn't the edge of the building that's it so i will put that in to make sure that you uh, know that that's Because we don't want confusion. Oh, I see. Because like that. That's something else. It's just another bit of the the building. Okay, bye, Gracie. Take care. Sleep well. Okay, you know. See you later. Well, what you're at a stop? No, you're still painting. I'm still painting. Um, I'm going to stop in a bit because we're we're going over time. Mm -hmm. I've not got an awful lot done here. So, um, you got, but what you got? You said you got eighty percent done, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to go more over these shades and get them a bit better toned and some a bit more toning in various areas, and then I would call it done. And then and you'll send it a picture. And, and then I, it might be tomorrow this now. Okay, that's fine. So, but um, a, a bit more detailing around that area. But apart from that, that's like my semi-sunset. Uh, I think it's Havana. Is it Havana, the capital city of Cuba? Yes, Havana. I think Havana is the capital. Uh, Havana. Havana. Uh, town painting what are you saying is you, this is a sunset yeah sun's low look that's where the sun is if you look it's round there oh i don't know i thought with a i don't know the the, right well, you know, you, know I, the, you know that 
Um, the sun is low in the sky when you have long shadows. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Oh. Whenever things cast in long shadows, that means yeah, like the car, the car shadows, very long shadows. Yeah, the very long shadows. So you know straight away that that means the sun is low on the horizon. Oh, but it's okay. not. It's not low enough to be start well, becoming it's hidden behind the clouds. The sun's hidden behind the clouds, right? No, it's uh, this is th this is like blue sky with a little bit of clouding in it, but it's, it's at that stage just before it starts going red. So it's in a, it's like a yellowy white area. Jen said, Jen's wild about art said it looks like evening sun. Yeah, it's 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 um it's, it's yellowy white. But it's very burnt out. But it's very strong, low on the evening horizon. The grayscale painting says he says that the sun is setting behind the building. That's right. Yeah, and that's why this building here, there's a little bit of leakage, and that's that's the reason why I want to. Oh, I see. Um, uh, I'll get some of this blue, and I'll get some of this brown. And make a dark colour and there okay. right let's get rid of that now and that will like give the idea that it's like leaking into it And then I'll repaint those windows back in. And, and that's all about shadowing and getting your shadowing right. You, you need to know wh which bits of the building are going to be heavily shaded. Right. Like that bit there. That's going to be a lot darker. See if I can put them in. And you ain't got to be scared of using like strong colours because it'll all mellow back down. Get some of that in. Mellowing it out as it as it um, moves away from thing. And I'll leave it at that at the moment, but I'll have to rework that. But it's got the right tone in it to make it look as though the light is slowly but surely creeping around that edge, which it would do. Mm, okay. Replace the... Um, oh, I see a little bit of that orange. Yeah, it's the, coming the detail. Thing. Yeah, you get a little... Subtle, round, round the edge of the, where it's facing from, round the edge of the building, you will get a, an edge that is... Um, got a, a little bit of light peeling round it, unless it's absolutely opposite away from it. Like, for example, there's the light there. In theory, that there. Let me just get a bit of. That one there should be that dark. Can you see the difference there? Oh, yeah. See if we can get it a little bit darker. And just coming about halfway across there, it's that one. And because it's a building that's very nice, Ian. Because it's a building that's curving round, that side will be having light at it. So 
you don't do an awful lot to that other than put a little bit of yellow in it. J I mean JCT says very nice Ian. Thank you. Jen's Wild about art says that's wonderful. I struggle with shadows. Well, what I've done is I've just uh, you can explain to her. I'm sorry, I really it's emergency break. Oh, hey. No. I mean, not really oh. emergency, but all right then you do what you have to do um yeah it's just i think best thing we um with shadows is first of all find your light source and plan it out where it should be and and don't go for the obvious of um it shadows are gray they're not they're just deeper deeper uh, tones of whatever surface they're touching so some things might be redder some things might be bluer some things might be a, a totally other different color but it's a deeper version of the actual thing and what i've done is i've i've made it so that it all interlinks with one another as one shadow and, and, and like like we've been looking at during the uh, uh, interlink you mean interlocking shadows interlocking shadows yeah because it helps with the painting if you interlock things in watercolors it helps tremendously or any painting don't you think well uh, I'm saying that from a watercolorist viewpoint. I'm, I'm more than sure that that, that principle uh, is is universal. Yeah. And then softening edges in certain areas is something that, again, uh, always worth having a look at. And and linking actual shadows with tonal valued areas like that and it, it it helps create that link that everything's actually really together oh okay because it is all, all those things are together in some way aren't they they're all buildings or something yeah, but I, but, I also think of things i also think of things as separate like the, the shadows could be sh separate and not touching right um oh yeah i mean you can have individual things separate and, and not and not touching i've done it in this way it's because it, it, it's fairly customary in watercolor painting for um shadows to be dealt with like that uh, to be put in some kind of um block that intermingles because watercolor is a thing that intermingles uh, it, it's kind of like a standard for it so it's it's something that's especially when you're doing this kind of abstract because it helps with the structure of what it is that you're painting oh it helps with the structure yeah it, it gives things like uh you know structure, a, a kind of, yeah, kind of structure yeah I just put Ian Jackson's uh, YouTube channel in the chat, but most right. of you know most I'll, of you know his channel. Yeah, I, I, would, I think I think I don't think there's anybody here today that. Uh, there, there was people in here. But not a glamour. She, she wouldn't have not have known your channel. But if and she I, ever asked, me, she could she could easily ask me, and I would because I see her I see her 
many times during the week because she has her own live stream and I see her then and if she really want but then if she really wanted it she could ask me but so well I could work on this for hours and hours and hours but um at this moment in time I'm I'm gonna because I know you've you're on a particularly limited time uh I think I'll probably leave it at that and just work at it later uh various bits that I'm not 100 percent happy with yet so it's by no means absolutely completed this one. Right. But it was always going to be a, a tough one to get finished. Um, no, that's another area that needs darkening. All right. Thank you, Ian, for being a guest right, all right. again, as usual. And thank you um, to my moderators that were helping out. And thank you for people that um, are listening and that not chatting in the chat. Thank you for people contributing in the chat, making the chat um, interesting. And Do you want me to uh, lift it up so you can see it in all its glory. Okay, he's going to lift it up. And then, and then you have to like move it around so people see the whole thing. Well, there's only that above it. Yeah, the sky. Well, well, that's a compositional element, though. You have to show the sky like that. Oh, but you do. I mean, the the the, the sky sets the mood. So, and, and as you can see, right. I mean, it's, it, it, it's I like that. Yeah. impressionistic. As you can see that. I you, love impressionism. You, you, you've got your light source there or outer edge of it and it's having an effect on edge of this building everything's fuzzy and light and as you get farther away from the edge it gets darker oh let's see jen's wild about art says thank you so much for a wonderful live stream guys oh thank you jen for coming by popping by mm -hmm. right after your own live stream thank you so much and um, great go painting, another wonderful session. Take care. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so you much. After, Jen, you should do it after uh, after this, and then we could all go over to it. Well, that's an idea, Jen. I don't know if you want to like wait to do it after because we always it just might, go, it, might, it might be late. Yeah, day we or, two hours. I'm sorry, we only go two hours. Sorry, four to six p.m. So maybe you want to think about that, and then we can then we we can do a raid all the time. I don't know. Uh -huh. Okay, what, what were you saying? Sorry. No, uh, that's it. What? So apart from getting a little bit of definition here and there in painting, I, I think I'm mostly done anyway. The bits to. Uh, finish off that I've not quite done. Good night, JCT. She says, Good night, Diana. Good night, JCT. I hope you're going to feel better soon. Keep feeling better. And uh, I'll put this painting up on my uh, what they call it in the week. She says, Jen, Jen's um, what about our does that? She says, Yeah, lol. Uh, that would be awesome. I do need to figure out. A better time. So, I mean, it's all down to what availability uh, Jen has or whoever yeah, it is. Lies, I mean, it's never easy figuring out what uh, what time you need to go. I'm going to go crazy here and give this person. Uh, <laughs> what are you painting what on the person? I, I, they're a person that I forgot to paint in there uh, that I put in. Another, your second person? I'm, I'm, eh? You're painting a second person? No, they were a person that I put the head in, but I didn't put any body in there for it. Oh. So I, I, I've just made the executive decision to give that person green trousers. <laughs> there you go. Hey, listen, I had a pair of green oh, flares. I, I had a pair of green flares, a, a oh. pair of green flares in 1970s, so don't. Don't, don't, tell don't, they're green. don't show, don't show uh, any disrespect to the green flares. Oh, I don't care. All right, right. Uh, it's 20. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you for the good artist. Rant thank you. Uh, uh, rant of the day, right? I said I'd 
say it at the end and it's because what even though i'm in europe i'm no longer european oh. where, where, they took my where european, are you? They, you're, you're they took my european away from me you're british, you're british? I'm, I'm i'm british now not they european took, I, i'm not european anymore took my europeanness away from me Oh no, we can't. Now you're gonna have to have that as a rant for next week. It'll all be out. We'll, 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 we'll melt down. They'll have shut the internet down in England by time by next week. What? Now, now we've brexited. We brexited 15 minutes ago. I'm surprised we're still we're still online. I really am. Wait a minute. <laughs> Brexited? Okay. So anyway, we'll see you later in the week, huh? Late well, my live streams are later in the week. Uh, my next live stream, well, I'm live streaming a lot now. Mm -hmm. Tuesday morning, Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, nine to eleven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do a, uh, I'm a, on a team now, a uh, Dream Team Grow Stream, and we we do Grow Streams. Um, nine to uh, I, mine is nine to eleven a.m. Tuesdays and Wednesdays Eastern Standard Time, and then on every Wednesday now for at one p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Gracie Shack Art and myself are on panel. Um, she paints something and I'm painting something. We're side by side. And then again, next Friday, every Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every Friday is Ian Friday. Ian Jackson, wonderful watercolorist. Extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Then. We'll see you later then. Okay. Okay, see you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming in. Remember, we're all creative beings, and we were created to we were created to be creative. And creative doesn't creativity doesn't just mean art. There's many ways to be creative.